to a new silver lining video. In this video, I'll be using the Engawa Exemplar again for a speed run on silver, obviously. This is not a custom mission, this was an official mission with one life to live. I put all my points in barricade. I want electric defense. You will understand why in the gameplay. And also bioelectric focus is really important in fact. Uh, the first thing I want is power recharge speed and I want to make more damage to shields. Which is the exact same thing as for uh, electric defense on barricade. Plus the barricade will grant me some weapon bonus damage which I don't have with any other trees. That's something you should know. Also energy drain, recharge speed and extended drain. Area damage and spamming the power, especially with the efficiency perk of the bioelectric focus tree. That's just perfect, you know. And the same thing goes with bioelectric defense. I, I want more damage resistance while I am evading. And again, power recharge speed and the bioelectric ward. Though it's not necessary really to have it for a speed run. It's useful, of course, but. So, this is my build, structural ergonomics. I could have used the, the expert package to grant me even more weapon damage on my pistol, but I chose a structural ergonomics because I wanted to spam my power and. Even on silver, that's okay. Weapon damage is okay. So basically, if I want to speedrun the thing, I cannot die on this mission. This is one life to live, okay? So I cannot die at all. Hostile territory, people. Secure this position and stay sharp. But that doesn't mean I, I don't have to take risks. So you see at the very beginning I stay in this building, but I could have gone anywhere else. This is not my first attempt on other attempts. Uh, I used to go directly on the roof. And what I want is to prime the enemy and detonate as soon as I see one enemy. So, push X for a little while, and then you can prime many enemies at the same time and just detonate a combo after that. I'm also using the Ashore pistol because in this wave, the only enemies I've got have health, and that's easier to kill them. It's also very useful to break the shields, but as I insisted during the build, in fact, it's, you know, it's not really necessary to to worry about power with charge speed. I think it's, it's great already. So yeah, this was not my first attempt, but this was my best attempt, ironically. I didn't really have the time to manage a sub-10 solo. But I chose this mission because the two objectives were target objectives. And, you know, the challenges of the day were tech power and this map. So, yeah, ergonomically speaking, Yangar example was the best choice to finish all these challenges. The first wave took me two minutes, which already is way too much, but I don't know, I never managed to, to do that under 90 seconds, I don't know why. I think it's because the map is very big as compared to Firebase Zero. So yeah, unfortunately you have to look for the enemy all the time and, you know. Things become a little more difficult on wave two because of the destined, but again, Thanks to this beautiful character you have in your hands. It's very simple to prime the destined and detonate a combo. Not only do you deal area damage, but you also prime any other enemies that will go through the area where you've just detonated your combo. That's a good way of speedrunning the match, in fact because you double combo any group of enemies you have in front of you. And when I say double combo, that is regardless of the 4 seconds you have to wait between each combo on a regular game with any other character. 
except this one. This is, you know, the only exception to the rule. Just like the kinetocyst is the only exception to the rule of power recharge speed, thanks to ascension. That's basically the same thing with this character. That that's why he's so great. The only problem I have with it is that it's very flimsy more than the human sentinel is basically it's basically the same powers as you know the human sentinel barricade and energy drain the only big difference is uh, overload but that's the hell of a difference in fact that's great power you know especially against the cat because the cat have a huge amount of um shielded enemies they have destined and anointed well that's not a huge amount but they can deal much damage, both of them. Be careful. Scratch one target. I try to get rid of the targets as soon as possible, but sometimes you will see I just miss. Especially in Energy Drain, I don't know. It's because there are some elements in the environment and sometimes I aim at these objects in the world and unfortunately instead of shooting the enemy, the Angara would shoot the object instead. And I don't know, it's especially with Energy Drain, I don't know why, but still. And there's also a few seconds between each target, which can be really frustrating because you have to wait and you don't really know where it's going to spawn. Also, given that it's not a custom match, I didn't even know what the targets were going to be. No chance that it was going to be an armored enemy like the Fiend or uh, an Ascendant. On wave 6 I'm not saying because there is already an ascendant on the field, but, you know, nice job, uh, on wave 3 it would have been impossible. It might have been an anointed though, not on bronze, but on silver you might have an anointed on such games, you know, anyway. So I'm going on the roof, again my goal is to find spawns and to try to get rid of the spawn as quick as possible. It's not the most impressive gameplay footage I have of this character really, but given that it was my best time, I had to keep it. I didn't save the other ones, but they were more impressive, you know, because eventually you, you managed to do amazing things with this character, I, I'm not kidding. It's a wonderful character. It's a shame it's a little flimsy. I still have to work on the build. That's a character that I'm rediscovering since I've completed my bonus stats. Wave 4 has nothing exceptional if you compare Silver and Brawls. Including the Anointed. There are only 4 enemy types on the field. And the Ascendant will only show up in the next wave. The difference might be the number of enemies on the field, I don't really know. I'm still working on the bronze and uh, silver spreadsheet for wave composition. Uh, I'm still working on it. My priority was platinum, but uh, I think I've come to a stage of understanding about platinum. That allows me to focus on other difficulties now so i don't know i keep you posted i've almost finished bronze because i know it by heart but silver i still have there are still some ambiguities as far as the number of enemies is concerned the big difference for the first two waves is that there, there will be a destined as early as wave two but on bronze the destined only show up on wave three and in fact bronze is <laughs> It's a bit repetitive, the first two waves are exactly the same. Uh, I thought there was a little difference, but no, uh, really, uh, all my tests show the same thing, so... The fifth wave, in comparison with bronze, can be a little tricky, because I think that there might be an additional destin on the field, as opposed to bronze, uh, I'm not sure about this. But yeah, the difficulty is that you are urged by the, the Ascendant, but given that it's a speedrun and given that I'm moving all the time, 
The only thing I needed to know is where is the Ascendant and is it throwing its orb attack? If it is, then just go away, you know, don't risk dying. I used a cool ride, that was not really necessary, but that helped me a thing a little. In my other attempts, I would use the Ashore and the bonus damage on weapons of my barricade to kill the Ascendant as quickly as I did with the Cobra RPG. So I don't really know why I'm, I'm so long, but in fact, you know, 13 minutes and like 20 seconds, I could have done better than this, but I, I don't know, I, all the attempts were over 13 minutes. So I don't know. <laughs> Still, it was interesting, especially given that there was the one life to live challenge, so you have to be really careful. Just three hostiles remaining. The Ascendant can kill you, okay, if you don't pay attention. It's also a very good exercise to, to gain on some survivability skills. You will see on many occasions I use Barricade as, you know, a last resort power to to defend myself against the enemies. I'm not killing anything now except the targets, simply because if I kill anything that will respawn except the Ascendant and the Fiend, but they are not so annoying right now. It would have been very annoying had I had a hack or upload, for instance, but given that it's target and given that I have to move all the time, they are not so boring, so... I lost time a little finding the Anunted before I killed it, and then I used the Koa RPG uh, to get rid of most of the wave as quickly as possible. The moment wave 6 is finished, I know exactly what my time is going to be, obviously, because there's only 2 minutes and 5 seconds for the extraction, and there's also, I think, between 5 and 10 seconds between each wave. It's somewhere around 5 and 10 seconds between each wave when, you know, there's the plate saying wave completed, and uh, the, the plate that says wave 7 extraction. There are a few seconds you have to wait. And gee, let me tell you, that can be really disturbing sometimes. And you know, it's part of the speedrun, in fact, having the time as we do now. Uh, that was not the case with Mass Effect 3, but with Mass Effect Andromeda, you can have an eye on the time you're making at any moment in your game. You can have a look at how fast or how slow you've been so far. Killing things now is not my priority. My priority is just to survive and to avoid sink killing enemies like the Fiend and the Ascendant. Well, in fact, any enemies could kill me, because that's one life to live. Most people use infiltrators with the one life to live challenge. That's not necessarily the best idea if you don't know how to play them. It's better to use a very tanky character like, I don't know, a soldier or the human commando. She's perfect for this. The human sentinel is also great with the one life to live challenge. Just because infiltrators have some abilities, but they do not really have all the abilities necessary to survive a platinum match. With silver, it's any character will do, but again, except perhaps the Solarian infiltrator, you have to be really careful with other infiltrators. Well, the Angara Vanir doesn't count. She's too OP, so <laughs> no worries about it. 
So yeah, that was a fun match. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've tried to produce other silver builds, though it's not really the priority of players to be spending time on silver. There's nothing really extraordinary on silver. But, well, at least I tried it. If you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my main channel if you like the music. Thank you for watching again, and see you in the next video. I exult out. Bye.